What's going on everybody? Hope you're having a great day so far. Jeremiah here from Babylon in my backyard, a pond and garden channel packed full of informative and how-to videos for you. This video we're talking about siphons. Specifically we're going to be talking a lot about bell siphons like the one that just kicked on here. But before we get into talking in detail about a bell siphon, we are going to first talk about a couple other siphon methods to help you understand this one. To any aquarium hobbyists, this gravel vacuum, which is just a, another form of siphon, is a very well-known tool. Most of the time you'd have to use your mouth to pull air out of the tube like a straw, and then you're using gravity to siphon the water down. For me, and this one that I have, I don't like to get that stuff in my mouth, so I have one with the bulb on it. This is just a primer bulb. As soon as I seal that off and all of the air is out of it, the siphon is created and I can clean the rock. Lifting this, as soon as air is in the chamber, the siphon is broken. Another way that I've used siphons is by pumping collected rainwater on one side of the house, which is way over there. And to prime it, I use this pump, keeping the one end of the hose way over there in the uh, IBC tote that was collecting rainwater. I can take this pump, put it into this pond, and then I'll just turn it on real quick, getting rid of all of the air in the hose. And then I can just un unplug the pump and leave it in the pond and it would start siphoning the water back to the pond. Another area that you use siphons every day is your toilet. Typically your water level sits right here. So on the drain side of your toilet in the back, you would have the water flowing over here and then draining down. So when you flush the toilet, a large amount of water gets drained from the upper tank and it goes down rushing into the bowl or even straight below the bowl where there's a jet shooting back into this drain line. The rush of water causes the air to get lost back here. A siphon is kicked on it to pull all of the water quickly out of the bowl. So why then, when you just pee in the toilet, does it not cause the toilet to flush? The answer to that question is flow rate. You just don't produce pee at a fast enough rate to cause the toilet to flush. When you have a drain style siphon instead of a primed siphon, flow rate is critical in creating the siphon. If you have a standing drain line, as shown here, as your water got high enough, it would start draining over the edge. If your flow rate is greater than your capacity of your drain line, you would close off all air in your drain line, and then that drain line would catch a siphon. In this application, though, it would just start pulling the water quicker down that drain until it caught air up here, and then it would stop until the water level increased enough to catch the siphon again. One way you can get the siphon to kick off faster without having such a high flow rate is by stepping the dr top of the drain down. So now the water has to flow down and kick inward and then it would cut off air faster and create the siphon. Still, it's going to have the same issue though. You're only going to be going above that drain and then to the edge of the drain and never anything below it. By putting a closed in pipe or bell over the top of the drain line, your water will fill equalizing inside of this bell and outside of the bell. 
but when your siphon kicks on from it overflowing, now your oxygen can't be caught because the bell is closing that in. So the siphon will be created and your water will drain on the outside of the bell all the way down until it catches air at the bottom. So this piece is three quarter pipe. Up here it goes three quarter to one inch. And I need that because up here, water's gonna flow over, surface tension's gonna cause it to flow over and stay nice against that wall. But because I have it splashing then inward to the smaller diameter, so the water goes down and shoots in, it cuts the air off. Once that air is cut off, that's when that siphon kicks on. If it were just right there, it's just gonna siphon until it caught air again because there's no, nothing causing it to, to not catch air. It's, it's up here exposed, air will be caught. That is why you actually use the bell itself. So this is clapped off on the end. As this goes over the top of that, now all the water has to go from underneath up through and over and because that's happening the air it can't get caught until it reaches down here so when that siphon kicks on it's going to start pulling hard all of the water out of this tub all the way down until it catches air down here and once it catches that air then it will stop the siphon and it will continue to fill again That's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, cause we always got great videos coming. Like this one, which is coming next week. So we've got a how-to video for how we're going to build this. And in that video, we will go way into more detail about the bell siphon. More than how it works like this video was, because I'm gonna refer back to this video for how it works. But in that video, we'll go into troubleshooting. There are things that go wrong in these beds, and we're gonna talk about how to look for the things that could go wrong in those. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Until that video, however, make sure you check out one of these other great videos. We've got cool videos to check out. If you haven't seen some of these other ones, go do that now. We'll see you in one of those videos. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> okay.